Early Tuesday, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore collapsed after a massive cargo ship collided with it. At the time of recording, two people have been rescued, but six remain missing. And as the search continues and President Biden has publicly declared that the federal government will pay for the full costs of the bridge repair, Republican Congress people have used this tragedy to either blame Democrats, make fun of Democrats, or baselessly fear monger and suggest that the whole thing was a terrorist attack. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends. So here's the situation. Early, I'm sure you are aware of this because it has been all over the news. Early Tuesday, uh, a bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed. There's video of it everywhere. Long story short, a massive cargo ship that you can see here lost power and collided with one of the pillars propping the bridge up, and the bridge collapsed. And this happened like within 30 seconds. Again, you can see a clip there. Now, it's being investigated. Two people have been rescued, but six workers who were working on repairing the bridge at the time that the ship collided with it are still missing. Now, that's the context for this. And to be very clear, there's no evidence whatsoever that this was a terrorist attack. And yet it has not stopped people like Alex Jones uh, and right-wing commentators or even sitting Republican Congress people like Marjorie Taylor Greene from hinting that maybe it was an attack. Marjorie Taylor Greene says this on Twitter. She says, there should be a serious investigation into the horrifying tragedy of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Maryland. Is this an intentional attack or an accident? Praying for the victims, survivors, and families. And as Aaron Rupar points out, the ugly truth behind this baseless, brainworm-addled conspiracy mongering like this is that people like Marjorie Taylor Greene are rooting for the bridge collapse to be an intentional act because they think they can score political points off of it. They want maximum misery this year because that helps Trump. He is correct. We've talked about this. We have seen Republicans openly thirst, be it at the situation at the southern border or several months ago where a car exploded um, coming back from Canada into the United States or leaving Canada to go into the United States via New York. Fox News and other places, they were just frothing at the mouth at the idea that it was a terrorist attack. The truth is MAGA Republicans, particularly the elected class, elected Republican Congress people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and many prominent right-wing commentators, they want it to be a terrorist attack because then they can blame Joe Biden for it. And if they don't have the evidence to suggest that it's a terrorist attack, they'll just do so. I'm just asking questions. They'll do so anyway. Super gross stuff. Irresponsible. Then you have other uh, Republican Congress people like Mike Collins saying Baltimore obviously won't rename the new bridge after Francis Scott Key again. So any guesses on the new bridge name? Now, Francis Scott Key, of course, is the person who wrote uh, the Star Spangled Banner, the national anthem. And so the idea is because the left hates America or whatever, they won't rename the new bridge the same as the old bridge. And that's what he's focused on during this tragedy. Uh, again, where six people remain missing. And then you have Nancy Mace. Republican Congresswoman from South Carolina. She went on Newsmax to subtly blame Democrats for the bridge collapse and talk about the bipartisan infrastructure law that President Biden passed into law in 2021. And she and Newsmax cobbled like, I'm like, you know what? If this was really such a big deal, why did the bridge collapse? We're going to play this clip. It's about a minute and 43 seconds long. Brace yourselves for maximum Nancy Mace grifting and dishonesty and Newsmax stupidity. Been here. Yeah, you'll hear that. I'm sure you'll hear the Democrats have a press release and conference somewhere today or tomorrow about it. the need for a trillion dollar infrastructure program uh, after all the other ones. And that's my question to you. It seems like we we do have these infrastructure bills, lots of money in it. I mean, I've been under bridges. They're horrible to look at. You look and you see rust. <laughs> if you drive over bridges, you see things you, you are like, am I going to make it over this? The bridges are definitely old. The roads are old. But why, after all these bills, after all the money, do we still have really old bridges and really old roads? Because we're not spending it on roads and bridges. Right. Look at the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill that was done a couple of years ago that the left hails as this massive success, but it was mostly Green New Deal. Actually, in that bill, $110 billion went to surface transportation, which is roads and bridges. And of that $110 billion, $70 billion went to public transportation, leaving only $40 billion for traditional 
traditional roads and bridges what you and I think about. And if you live along the coast or you live near water, you know that our bridges are rusting out. You know that we have many, many bridges that have to be replaced and upgraded. And you know it's probably about a billion dollars a bridge every time. And so I look at South Carolina when the infrastructure bill came through, we really only got one billion dollars more than we otherwise would have over a five-year period. I can barely build a bridge in my district for a billion dollars. That's just one district. So um, we have to be smarter. You look at the spending bill we did on Friday, all the waste that's in there, um, things that we should, the government should not be paying for when it could be going to things that are the government's purpose, like just like this. So a couple of things. The Newsmax host is talking about how he's been under bridges, presumably because he lived under those bridges um, as a troll. Um, so there's that. There's also the fact that this bill passed uh, in late 2021, this idea that this these funds are automatically disp dispensed and then they are applied like within like the every bridge in the aftermath of the bipartisan infrastructure law would be repaired within a two year span is ridiculous. We've discussed on transportation.gov, whitehouse.gov, there's an interactive map covering the thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of infrastructure and construction related projects in the United States ongoing, very often in red states, besides which this bridge didn't collapse because it was structurally unsound. It just didn't. A massive multi, 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 multi ton cargo ship lost power and collided with its central support structure. I'm, I'm not an architect. I'm not an engineer, but I would imagine very few bridges are actually designed to withstand that kind of impact. But see how they imply that it was a, a just a failure, an, a random failure of infrastructure that President Biden was supposed to address, but apparently didn't. Again, just the sleight of hand there to say nothing over the fact that Nancy Mace is misleading about the funding. The vast majority of the funds in the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act went towards physical infrastructure, but also um, you know, in internet as well, right? And increasing broadband um, and roads and bridges got $110 billion and public transportation got $39 billion from the bipartisan infrastructure law. But again, these funds are dispensed to state and local governments. Um, and then those governments work together to dispense the funds and create the, and assign the construction projects, et cetera, and so forth. This stuff takes time. It's going to be a multi-year, multi-decade long effort. Besides which, as somebody else pointed out, Nancy Mace voted against President Biden's infrastructure bill, but then took credit for it and the funds it provided to a transit hub in her state. And now she's blaming it for the Baltimore bridge collapse because it's apparently wasteful and doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Um, she was fact-checked on this back in 2023 by South Carolina Democrats. Um, if Nancy Mace wants to tout these critical funds coming to her district, she should have voted for them. House Democrats like Congressman Jim Clyburn delivered these historic investments to South Carolinians. If it were up to Mace and a majority of her Republican colleagues, investments in CARTA wouldn't exist. And that's the Charleston Area Regional Transport Authority. OK, um, this is what Nancy Mace and Republicans do. Somebody else pointed out a story in three parts. She trashes, trashes the bipartisan infrastructure bill as a socialist wish list. It's clip one. She touts the funding from the same bill as a win for her district. That's here. And then she's complaining about it now. That's Nancy Mace for you. She's just a perpetual grifter with no principle whatsoever. Also want to point out that President Biden, according to the mayor of Baltimore, excuse me, the gover governor of Maryland, Wes Moore, and the mayor of Baltimore, President Biden and the federal government have been actively engaged with the situation since it occurred also the chance to speak with both the president and the vice president who have been full throated in their support of everything that we're doing here in Maryland. And we just want to say how grateful we are to them, how grateful we are to the secretary of transportation and the department of transportation who within hours of this happening, I was on the phone with the secretary of transportation. I think secretary Buttigieg then called me at 3 30 in the morning. Uh, and now he and his entire team have been down here this afternoon spending time looking at the efforts, looking at the damage, and also identifying what they can do to support and help. And Secretary Buttigieg, the uh, Secretary of Transportation, standing beside him as well. Also want to play a couple of clips here of President Biden giving a press conference in which he publicly reiterates the support of the federal government 
to Baltimore and to Maryland. Speak. I spoke with Governor Moore this morning, as well as the mayor of Baltimore, the county executive, United, to both United States senators and the congressman. And my secretary of transportation is on the scene. I told them we're going to send all the federal resources they need as we respond to this emergency. Going to send all the federal resources they need. He even goes one further and says that the federal government will be responsible for footing the bill, and he hopes he can get Congress's support for it. The bridge is also critical to, for travel, not just for Baltimore, but for the Northeast Corridor. Over 30,000 vehicles cross the Francis Scott Key Bridge on a daily basis. It's virtually, uh, well, it's a, well, it's one of the most important elements for the economy in the Northeast and the quality of life. My transportation secretary is there now. As I told Governor Moore, I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. And we're going to work hand in hand with the support of Maryland to support Maryland and whatever they ask for. We're going to work with our partners in Congress to make sure the state gets the support it needs. So, folks, there you go. This is the actions. These are the actions and rhetoric of a dedicated leader, of somebody who is involved, um, who has been on the horn immediately, who sent proper authorities down there. And according to, again, the governor, Westmore, according to the mayor of Baltimore, the federal government has been actively engaged. Meanwhile, contrast, you have Republicans, again, using this tragedy to blame Democrats, to mock Democrats, and to baselessly allege that this thing um, was the result of a terrorist attack. And again, I just want to draw your attention real quick to a community note that was put under Marjorie Taylor Greene. Baltimore Police Commissioner Richard Worley said, Quote, there's absolutely no indication that there's any terrorism or that this was done on purpose. Governor Westmore confirms that the ship's crew issued a May Day and communicated they were experiencing a power issue. So once again, in an election year, we see the stark contrast between Democratic competence and Republican stupidity and exploitation. Let me know what you think in the comments.